I know a lot of people love this. In my opinion, it's hot trash. You think I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You? I'm not lying. Well Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, I hope you are well. Today, we're doing a really exciting video, but it's one that like, well I've never done it before because I've never been on booktube at this point in the year, but we're doing the mid-year book free cat tag. I've been watching some people's videos of this, and everyone's like, this is my favourite time of the year, I love doing these videos, and I'm like, it's only my third day out here. Yeah. It's only my third day out here. I don't know. Yo, yo, shit. I am excited, however, to look back at the books that I have read so far this year. So the first question is, best book you've read so far in 2020? This is impossible for me to answer. Like, it's so hard. I can't do it. My heart is saying no. I'm going to treat this question as standalines, not series. I'll talk about series in the next question, because I'm going to... I think I'll change the question a bit to what I want. <laughs> so if we're talking just about standalones, I think it would have to be between two. The first would be The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I don't actually have it right now. If you're a regular on my channel, you have heard me speak about this book quite a bit. <laughs> but it is a murder mystery set on this remote island off the coast of the country island and we're at a wedding of this really rich, influential couple and we find out on the first page that someone has been killed at the wedding and we don't know for the majority of the book who it is, who has done the killing. It's a really traditional whodunit. And for me, this book is also just like representative of me falling in love with the murder mystery genre and mysteries in general this year. They're kind of all I want to read, but I also think murder mysteries in that kind of like traditional Agatha Christie style, it's something that's difficult to find modern versions of. Like, I don't think they're written enough. I would, I just want to be drowning in them, but I'm not. So <laughs> if you have any good recommendations, please do let me know. But the guest list was just so engaging. You had this cast of characters who the majority of them were just completely horrible, but you had a few who were normal. It made it more bearable because you had a few people who were your eyes in the situation. I just thought the tension built so well. I loved the writing and I loved how we didn't know who was dead because for a lot of the book my theory as to who was the murderer was actually the person who ended up being killed. I really liked that twist on it whereas normally you know who's been killed but I think it just adds an extra element of intrigue so this book was great for me but it was also emblematic of a new genre that I was falling in love with. And then my other answer would have to be Middle Game by Shauna Maguire. I loved this book but I don't, I still quite, ah! I love this song. I don't, <laughs> I still don't quite know how to feel about it fully. It's a book that you can't really put into a category and we have the twins, Roger and Dodger, who have been made by this scientist and he is trying to use them to gain control of the world. And it's about alchemy and about telepathy between the twins. And I can't really say much more than that. It's an impossible book to describe. You need to go into this pretty blind, but it was just like a work of art. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yup. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 She ate that up. And the next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2020. And I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to talk about two series that I've read the whole of the series already in 2020. And these are up there with my favourite books of the year too, with those standalones. I don't know how I'm going to pick at the end of this year, like I, I really have no idea. First is The Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a science fiction YA series that is told completely through multimedia format. So you have chat logs, you have some really cool pages where you might need to rotate the book or the words go like that. And the multimedia format is a massive reason as to why I love these books. and. Also why I think they are so readable. They're fairly chunky, but they are so quick to read. And the first one, a company wages war on this illegal planet that our two main characters are living on and they have to escape. They're living on separate ships and they are communicating through these multimedia formats. These books follow different characters to the first one. We're following different aspects of this war. I think Gemina was my favorite. Oh, I think Gemina was my favorite out of the three we matched today. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. Gemini had this great part of it where it doesn't kick off until like page 130. This is 659 pages and everything is kind of not calm, but like coasting until page 130 and then shit just hits the fan and it goes mental. And I love the characters in this. One of my favorite characters in the whole series, Ella, is in this and 
that series is just, it's just incredible. Like it's just beyond anything I've ever read in terms of imagination and in terms of really coming up with something new. I'm putting my whole family onto it and they're all loving it. <gasps> so excited. <laughs> And then the other series I have to mention, which I talk about all the time, is the Heartstopper graphic novel series. This has my heart. You'll know if you've been here how obsessed I am with this series. We're following Nick and Charlie as they fall in love. And Alice Oseman's drawing style on this is just like, it kills me. It act it kills me. This made me fall in love with graphic novels. And if you're looking for something cute, warm, fuzzy, that will just like fill your heart with joy, this graphic novel series is it. The next question is a new release you haven't read yet but want to and for this I'd have to say you should see Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I've seen so many people talk about this and give it rave reviews and it's on my script, it's just waiting for me <laughs> to pick it up. It's about a girl called Liz who has these dreams of going to this college in order to become a doctor and to play in the orchestra there. However, the money that the financial aid that she was counting on to be able to go there falls through. However, she realises that her school has a scholarship for prom king and queen. And so then her goal is to become prom king. I don't know what the f she's saying, but girl, I am lit. Her goal is then to become prom queen so that she can get the scholarship so she can go to the school that she wants. However, it's a bit of a difficult journey and she ends up, I think, falling for another girl who is running for prom. I can't speak today who is running for prom queen. And so it's a female, female romance. I've seen so many people whose opinions I trust and who have very similar opinions who love this. And I've just been eyeing it up since before it came out. So I'm really excited to get to this one. Next is what is your most anticipated release for the next half of the year? And I have two answers for this. <laughs> First is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Now I haven't read Station Eleven. Don't hate me. I wanna read that really badly. But this one intrigues me so much because it reminds me in certain aspects of the style of sea, even though they're very different in genre. But it seems like The Glass Hotel, from my understanding, like follows quite a few different characters and it's a lot of intrigue and mystery. And that's kind of elements I enjoyed a lot in The Star of the Sea. I cannot tell you really the plot of The Glass Hotel. I know we're set in a glass hotel, I know there's a woman who goes missing, I know there's a guy called Vincent who works at the hotel and there's something to do with his brother. Mm, I know a lot of things, but I don't know about that. I'm not sure why. I'm very excited to read it. I've already pre-ordered it as a birthday gift for my mum because it was on her birthday list. It means I get to read it also. <laughs> Is there no budget this time around? And then my other most anticipated release is One by Run by Ruth Ware. Now, if you've watched my video where I read new releases, I've actually read an arc of this and I loved it. It was five stars. It was amazing. It's not the most complex thriller, if that is what you're looking for. It gives me those very much like murder mystery, isolated group, stuck somewhere vibes, which I love. All the thrillers I love are isolated, close circle mysteries. Oh, it's so good. I love everything about this. And this is about a company who go on a trip to this ski resort and you don't really know why. And there's a one woman there who worked at the company years and years and years ago and has come on the trip with them. And you're like, sis, why are you there? <laughs> why is she here? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? You eventually find out why she's there and one of the group is murdered and you're like, oh shit. And it goes on from there and it's, oh, it's so good. I love the atmosphere. I love everything about it. And the reason I'm so looking forward to it coming out is so that all of you can read it. And you can say, Megan, you were right. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be to everyone's taste because like I said, it's quite simple. I think you figure out the baddie quite early on, but I think that was intentional. So I'm very excited for everyone to read this one and then we can all talk about it. <laughs> my biggest disappointment, this is fairly easy because I just made a video all about my most disappointing books, but this is one I read right at the start of the year and it is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This one, Goodreads, best romance of the year last year. Everyone seems to love it. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> if it came on, I wouldn't necessarily um, skip it. Well, that's not true. I would. I would skip it. I gave this two stars, but I kind of think that was a bit too generous almost. I think if I read this now, just a couple months later, I'd give it one star because I've become a bit more picky. <sighs> This is, oh my god, I don't even want to talk about it. This is a romance between the son of the President of the United States and a Prince of England, and it's about them 
It's okay, okay. Firstly, everyone says it's enemies to lovers. It's not. It's not enemies to lovers because, like, it they are they're only enemies for like thirty pages, and then they're like, oh, I secretly loved you the whole time. But then you weren't enemies then. I just thought the romance in this was really poorly written. The prince in this also, the Prince of England, was very caricature of like what someone thinks a posh British person is like. And listen, I hate posh British people, like. Vote Labour, please. But it was such a caricature with almost no depth to it that I just felt like he wasn't a real person. And if I'm supposed to be reading a romance and becoming really attached to the characters, like all this book is, is their relationship. If one of you doesn't seem like a real person to me, how am I supposed to get attached to your romance? So I know a lot of people love this. In my opinion, it's hot trash. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You? I'm not lying. Well, it was stupid as well. There are so many stupid things happening in this book that I can't tell you because they're spoilers, but like just stupid stuff. And I'm like, if you're in the position you were in as these people, this this would not be happening in a million years. You would not be that stupid. Anyway, I hated it. <laughs> Biggest surprise is the next question. And for this, I'd have to go for The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodore Goss. This is kind of like a mystery set in Victorian England featuring the daughters of a lot of the kind of male classic figures. So we've got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's daughters. We've got the female Frankenstein. Sherlock and Watson appear in this together as well, kind of to help the girls. But it's done really well in a way that the girls are still the focus of the story. But this was such a surprise. I read it for my murder mystery video and I just needed another book to read on, aud on audiobook. And I just scrolled through and found this and I thought it was gonna be three stars, average, whatever, on a whim. Read it, loved it, it was five stars. The girls have a really great found family. There's about five or six of them and you just fall in love with them and the support that they give each other. And the way that it's told is that one of the girls is writing the book. And so occasionally the other girls will pipe in and it will be written almost like a play where they'll be arguing about how certain events actually happen. And I just thought that that form of storytelling of us meeting some of the girls through that first was brilliant and it made it so engaging, especially listening to the audiobook. I do want to, from now on, at some point, get the rest in the series, but I am, I think, going to listen along to the audiobook whilst reading it physically. I think that'd be the perfect thing because the covers are gorgeous and so I want to own these books because I think they're all going to be favourites, but the audiobook's also incredible, so I'd recommend listening to the audiobooks as well. But favourite new author, I think a lot of my opinions are the same. I'd probably say I'd never read any Amy Co from or Jay Kristoff before. I'm really excited to get written to their, some of their other stuff. And so I'd probably have to say them. I know they're not new authors because this is debut or new to you. I don't think I've read really many debut authors this year. Oh, actually, I read Wilder Girls by Rory Power and this is Rory Power's first debut book. And I loved this. I gave it four stars. I think it was like a 4.5. It was so close to being a five star, but just like not quite there. But I know a lot of people don't love this, but I do. <laughs> Everyone loves me. Well, the old bastard hates me, but they're just wrong. I think I'm just special. Special. This is about three girls who are at this boarding school where something called the tox has happened, which is essentially a illness that is mutating in all the girls in different ways. One of the girls goes missing, and so then the other two have to go look for them. It's also female-female romance. I think the vibes of this, like the atmosphere, unparalleled. I want this to be a Netflix original limited series. Oh my, oh my God, it would be so good. It would be so good. Like, you know, when you think of something like that, you're like, oh, I want that to be a Netflix series. And then you get sad knowing it'll probably never happen. But you're like, it's just so deserving of it that I'm so sad that that is never gonna happen. But that's probably actually my favorite debut author, Rory Power. Okay, so the next question is newest fictional crush. I don't tend to crush on people in books. Let me have a think. If I had to say one, I'd probably say Hector from the Girl of Fire and Thorn series. He doesn't really, Hector doesn't kick in until books two and three. Newest favorite character. Oh, I have the answer. That would have to be Darby from No Exit. I just read this in my last vlog. I am obsessed with Darby in this book. So Darby is riding in a snowstorm to try and get back to her family and she, has to stop because the snow gets so bad she stops at like a rest stop and she finds that she's stuck there with four people and in one of the vans at the rest stop is a girl 
trapped in the van, locked in a cage. And so the whole book is her trying to figure out who it is, although she figures that out fairly quickly. And then it's all about trying to survive, trying to keep the girl alive and trying to get out of the situation that they're in. She pulls tricks at the bag. Darby does it. I, the stuff that she does in this book, how ingenuitive she is, the sacrifices she makes, how hard she fights. So good, so good. Well, just as I thought. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. This book made me so stressed. I said in the vlog, it gave me chest pain, it gave me heart palpitations. I was so stressed out for the few days. I'm too angry to talk. I want to smash someone's head in. She just really acts in a way that's so selfless and so determined. I just thought she was incredible. Like such an incredibly written character with flaws, but with so much like fight and grit as well. Next is a book that made you cry. I cry at like every book under the sun. <laughs> I cried so much at Gemina. And if you've read Gemina, you'll be like, bitch, why did you cry? Don't question it. I cried a lot at this book. <laughs> And then one that made me cry the ugliest tears in the world was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is about a boy whose mum is dying of cancer and then a monster turns up outside his house and tries to tell him stories and teach him lessons. And I have the illustrated version and it's very dark. You will be sobbing for that much onwards. Like you'll just be crying. I was a hot mess. And like, you know, when you have to take a bit of time after the book to just sit there and cry some more, this book, it killed me. And so if you're in the need for a cry, like if you're like, I just wanna read a book that'll make me cry. This is quite honestly it, this is it. Next is a book that made you happy. Again, I feel like a lot of my books make me happy in some way, but I also don't tend to read very many happy books. <laughs> Maybe if I had to say one, it'd be Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Ellen Hagen. I really enjoyed the girls' relationship in this. It's about two girls who set up like this feminist club at their school and it's them working out their own feminism, seeing how that feminism is flawed. And for me, I much prefer Jasmine's part in this. I don't know if the authors wrote half and half. I don't know if Renee Watson wrote Jasmine's parts and then Ellen Hagen wrote Chelsea's, but for me, they felt very different and I loved, loved, loved Jasmine's parts. I gave this four stars and probably Jasmine's parts were a five and Chelsea's parts were a three, so it kind of averaged out to four. Jasmine's journey and just her character made me really, really happy and definitely one of my favorite characters. She's so strong, but also figuring herself out. And I thought this was a really realistic exploration of being like 16 and wanting to be politically active, but understanding how you're flawed in certain ways and going through difficult family stuff. I felt like it was a really realistic look at what girls this age, how they feel. The next question is the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. I've gone with books that I know for sure I got this year. Cause there's a few that are beautiful down there. And I'm like, did I get you for Christmas? Or my birthday, because my birthday's in January. And so like, sometimes it's difficult to remember. <laughs> but I am gonna go for my cloth bound classics that I've received. So I have received Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and Little Women. And I, I just love these so much. I wanna collect them all. I just think they're gorgeous. You know what I'm obsessed with? Are you ready? You know what I'm obsessed with? You, for me, you know a book is amazing when it has this <laughs> ribbon bookmark. Oh, I love it. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. And the final question is, what books do you need to read this year? Now, there's like a billion books, quite honestly. If I had to tell you four, let's say four books I have to read. I just did a video of 21 books I wanna read before I'm 21. Um, and my birthday is January 28th. So I've literally got the rest of this year and <laughs> 28 days to read those 21 books. So definitely go check that video out because that's a much more elaborate answer. <laughs> but for all the books that were in that video and I'm not planning to read in the next two months. So like, whoops. Um, but they are Six Crows and Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I said that really fast. I'm really sorry. I was like, come on, Megan. Like, it's actually embarrassing. I loved Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I will speak highly of that book to the end of my days. I adored it. Everyone who hated it, you are wrong. I'm tempted to read these in like 24 or 48 hours, but I'm not sure if I'm capable of that. 
but I'm like tempted. Anyway, they are two of the ones I want to make sure I get around to. And then an author, which I have read nonfiction from, but I've never read fiction and I'm desperate to do so, is Americana and Half of Yellow Sun by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So these books have been on my TBR for like 50 years. <laughs> I've had these for so long and not picked them up because I find them so intimidating. I don't know why, but I, it's a small font, okay? <laughs> and fairly long. I love watching Tremanda Gozi Adichie speak. I love reading her non-fiction and so it's about time I get round to some of her fiction as well. But I mean, there's like 50 books, 60 even, more <laughs> that I need to finish by the end of this year. So there we have it. That is my mid-year book freak out tag. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was so much fun like reminiscing the books I've read across this year. I've actually had a really good reading year so far. I've got quite a lot of five stars. Let me know what some of your most anticipated reads are, what your most disappointing, most surprising, what you want to get round to. Let me know what some of your answers are to these questions down below. And I, oh, that was like, I really whipped my head there. If anyone's watching All Stars 5, I felt like India Ferrer when she's like. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you very, very soon with another video. Bye.